33 degrees Fahrenheit. That said, we're back at 1.30. Welcome back. Now, he's one of the religion's fiercest critics and a prolific thinker who's made his name popularising science. For his latest work, though, Richard Dawkins is writing about himself. In it, he chronicles the second half of his life in a new book, which takes us from his days at Oxford University through to launching his scientific works and having lunch with the Queen. And Richard joins us now. Good morning. Good morning. First question, I've got to get it out of the way. What was lunch with the Queen like? She was wonderful. She was very, very nice and friendly. She took exception to my tie, however, and I tell the story in the book. I was wearing one of my wife's ties. This is another of them here. She paints animals, and this occasion I wore my warthog tie. And the Queen didn't like it, and she said, why do you wear such ugly animals on your tie? She was... I was <laughs> delighted because you sort of think she only asks platitudes, but no, she, she really speaks her mind, and I think that's wonderful. And to be clear, what are these on your tie? Oh, these are uh, leaf insects. Right. Very nice. Uh, your, your book's called A Brief Candle... In, brief Candle in the dark. dark, which is a convolution of two. Well, it's Shakespeare, books. Brief Candle, that's Macbeth, of course, uh, and Candle in the Dark, that's Carl Sagan's science as a candle in the dark. So the, the, the Brief Candle is about the shortness of life. Uh, science as a candle in the dark is science as the beacon that leads you out of the obscurity of superstition. And uh, do you have the feeling, uh, when re recalling your life over two books, that it has gone by? very quickly. Of course, everybody has that feeling. It's, it's gone by incredibly quickly. I still feel about 25 years old. <laughs> what um, do you, would you like to have done or would you still like to do if um, life has gone by so quickly? OK, I mean, I'm, I'm pr pretty happy with, with, my, with the books that I've written. I'm, I'm glad to have done that. Um, I didn't do as much scientific research as I might have done because I spent all my time writing books. But I think that was a reasonably good decision. Um, what else might I have done? I could have been a computer programmer, perhaps. I, I wasted a lot of my life doing that when I wasn't supposed to be doing it. I'm amazed you find time to write anything, to be honest, because you've got 1.2 million Twitter followers and you are quite conscientious about replying to people. I was looking at your Twitter yeah, feed last I, night. You engage in debate with a lot I, of them. I suppose, I, I mean, I'm a born educator and I, I can't bear th people to get things wrong and I perhaps shouldn't care so much, but... but um, so if there's an illogicality or something, I just want to point it out. But there's nothing about Twitter in the, in the book, so no. it's not really relevant to our discussion. In, in <laughs> terms of being a born educator um, and, and your book, do you ever get frustrated that the interest in science amongst the younger generation appears to be waning? I don't think... That I, I have never really noticed that. I mean, I, I, when I'm promoting a book, I get huge audiences. They're very enthusiastic. Young people? Yes, young people. And, uh, and do they, they ask questions that, uh, yes. that challenge you? Uh, they ask questions that show they're curious mm. and interested, and I'm very in keen to answer the questions. They're very enthusiastic in the book signing cues. Um, I get a lot of mm. gratitude. It's a very gratifying experience being... Um, promoting a book in science, on yeah. science. And sometimes, of course, they ask challenging questions in the, in, in the book. You uh, wrote about the reaction in the United States to the God Delusion, uh, which is probably your, your most famous book, and the, the issues you came up with some American students. You've never... It, it's, it's never bothered you. You've always sort of been quite happy to, to take on... Oh, yes. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm not at all afraid of taking on argument. Um, but actually, it's surprising how little pushback I get um, when I go on book tours. That um, Most of the people who come to my uh, book events are enthusiastic. I rather wish there was a bit more opposition. I would enjoy that, but they tend not to come. They, they hand out leaflets outside the hall, but they don't actually... I don't know why they don't come in, but they don't. Did you intend to be controversial or cause controversy? No, I mean, I intend to speak the truth. I intend to be clear. I'm passionate about clarity, passionate about truth, passionate about science, uh, passionate about the universe, passionate about, about life. And so I, I do speak out clearly, but I, I don't intend to be controversial. Right. We've got time for, to discuss one more potentially controversial idea, which I think you've, you've brought up. Uh, A-levels need changing, do they? Well, um, I, I'm not so keen on testing people's knowledge as a way of, of get, getting them into university. I'd rather, I'd rather test people's intelligence and people's um, eagerness and keenness to, to study. How would you then assign that to a studying a subject at university? Um, by 
um, by fostering curiosity, by telling people to ask questions all the time, to ask for the evidence. Don't just mug up the facts. Look at the evidence. Evaluate it critically. C cultivate your critical faculties. Become a, become a critical expert in the subject as far as you can. Thank you very much for joining us on the sofa. Um, Richard's second memoir is called Brief Candle in the Dark. Well, our Brief Candle in the Dark is so going to go out for today. We'll be liking it again tomorrow at 6 o'clock.